Well, of course, mannequins in department stores have to reflect the most glamorous, the hottest look that the fashion world has to offer. So imagine the thrill if somebody walked up to you and said, hey, I want you to be the model for a mannequin. Well, that's exactly what happened to Rhonda Shearer when her face was discovered by a leading mannequin manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, my name is Professor Packman. Thank you very much. I've been working for the Motel Toy Company, and I created this latest creation. You heard of Betsy Wetsy? You heard of Chatty Cathy? <laughs> well, this is Rhonda Honda. Hum, 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 hum. It's great mileage, really. This is the story of Rhonda Shear, an up-and-coming Hollywood actress. When Norm Glazer caught her act at the Improv, a Los Angeles comedy club, he had a great idea. Since she played the role of a mannequin so convincingly, why not make her into one? So now Rhonda's face can be seen, and seen, and seen, because Rhonda is the cloned look of the 80s. For mannequins, that is. When I saw Rhonda at the Improv, I was charmed by her act. I've been creating mannequins for the last 25 years, but I knew if I fashioned a line to look like her, it would be totally original in its own subtle way. When I saw Rhonda, I was the perfect mannequin. She showed me exactly the way the mannequin was going to look with its body attitudes, with its facial expressions. It was no longer a gamble. She has that charm, that something special. I really believe that Rhonda captures the look of the 80s. They look at her and say, what a dummy. Ooh. I wish she were a real girl. No guy never ever sends her flowers. Ding dong, STD. <laughs> now you know why. Her face and form are being sculpted for use in the manufacturing of mannequins. When you're creating a mannequin uh, from scratch, you are 90% sure that the model you're choosing is going to be correct. There's a 10% guess at it. I look for someone that uh, reflects the look of today. Uh, someone that is, in, in her case, a uh, lifestyle of today. You go back to the early centuries, it might have been uh, Mary Pickford, it might have been in the 50s, Joan Crawford. Rhonda Shear exemplifies what we think the look of the 80s is going to be. A Rhonda, if you want to dissect her, is not perfect. Take her nose, her mouth, dissect it individually, she's not a perfect person. But together, it's a total look. She's, she's devastatingly beautiful. Being a sculptor subject was new for me. I felt flattered, even though it took quite a long time. You know what I wanted to ask you? How come, how come you prefer sculpting to the, uh, what do you call it, about face, face? Face casting? Face casting. Light casting? Yeah. Well, we haven't perfected a very good method for casting. And it, the weight of it flattens the face out so that it becomes just real, you know. The low spots get lower, <laughs> the high spots get lower too, and it gets a very sag look to it. Yeah, it's neat. Ah! What if she talks? <laughs> Someday we'll make a talking man. <laughs> Have you ever been up here alone and imagined that... <laughs> One I sometimes <laughs> dream at night about these things. Creating a mannequin is like creating a commercial product. We have to respond to our customer in the department store, and I have to do an interpretation of her that responds to what's happening in the fashion industry today. And therefore, our customer in the store will respond to her face and want to see themselves wearing what she has on. I love being a mannequin because, first of all, I do the mannequin routine, a mannequin act, but I have to admit it's very eerie to look at a likeness of yourself that really, I, I can see it. It's, um, it's strange, but it's fun. Mannequins have been used to display fashion since they were first introduced in the 1894 Paris Exposition. They were used by only the most prosperous of businesses at first because of their outrageous cost, $15. Early mannequins were of wax, intended to be heavy and awkward, especially in the summer months when they were prone to melting in the heat. They were big busted and their faces were very expressive. 
In 1925, manufacturers began to use paper mache. Eventually, this method was replaced by plaster, and in the early 60s, plastics began to be used in the process. Never before has there been such a wide variety of choices in dress as there are for today's woman. Clothes are colorful, functional, baggy, and bizarre. I think the look of the 80s is much more than just a look. It's a, being a total person, a total woman, which comes from being an achiever and uh, doing everything you can to make yourself not only look great but feel great exercising and getting out there and doing what you want to do going after it acting is what I do so I go after it 100 percent do you realize that I'm going to get to see myself in stores all over the country wearing outfits that I probably couldn't get myself <laughs> all those designer fashions it's really kind of interesting I get to see myself in clothes that I that I probably wouldn't pick out. This is definitely a different kind of fame than uh, one achieves in television or film. Uh, I have to say it will be exciting to see my face in store windows all over the country. <laughs> you know, it's fun being the female mannequin look of the 80s, but I seem to think that I need a male counterpart. Don't you, Michael? And I think the male should be you.